Hi, this is Lisa and welcome to my channel. This is part two of making a harness. And uh, in this video, we will complete up to this point. So we'll have the saddle, we'll have it adjusted and ready to go. The only thing we're missing is the bridle. So you can find a link to the patterns and a material list for the whole harness below. Now, this is a easy to make harness. I've used bigger buckles, thicker leather to make it easy on, easy off. Uh, very easy to show with. Now to make it better, to make it nicer, uh, you can use thinner, more refined leather, proper buckles with a little keeper on them, uh, holes in the leather for adjustment. Uh, for this, you can use tooling leather, which should make it much firmer. So you have tooling leather and dye, uh, proper keepers, stitch marks on everything. Just make it refined. But all, all together, it is still a correct, live show quality working harness. You would use this for uh, a pleasure harness, you'd use it for grassroots driving, or if you're doing something like a ride and drive, like we saw in that other uh, picture that I linked in the last video, and I'll probably link it here as well. So the idea at first is to get it correct, understand how all the parts work, and what makes it, what, what needs to be in what position. So let's proceed. You can find the pattern for the saddle linked below. And what I'm gonna do is cut the saddle lining out of regular leather, not patent leather. Now you can use this to create your own. It can be straight, it doesn't need the curves. You can design your own or use mine. Next, I'm gonna take my saddle top piece and cut it out of my patent leather. Punch a hole where it's shown in the pattern. I'm just using a small hole punch. And this will be for the turrets. And that's only if you're using the turrets that actually go through. Rio Rondo also has some turrets more like this and they do not require holes. Take the turrets and work them through the holes I'm gonna have shiny side up here. Here a small piece of 332nd inch lace. Mine's about an inch long. And a matching 332nd inch D-ring. Put the lace through, fold it in half, and glue that. Just going to round the edges a little on this piece to make it look neater and match all the other curved edges I have. Cut two pieces of 3 16 inch leather, long enough to go from about here to just below where the shafts will be. For the center, you'll need a water hook. This is from Rio Rondo. There's two of them here, you only need one. You need this piece right here and the little connector at the bottom. So cut those out. If you're not using the same kind of terrets and you're using these kind right here, you're going to apply them the same as we're doing the water hook. Take the base of the water hook and center it onto the top of the saddle. I'm just gonna mark two little holes where that should be. Take a pin and then going to just create two little holes there. So I'm gonna take the water hook and thread it through the base. Then with a little bit of glue, I'm going to thread it into the saddle. I want that to stick below just a tiny little bit, just to give it a little bit more support. And this base needs to be glued on to the leather. Folding the lining piece in half, I'm gonna match that with the water hook. And where these meet, these terrets meet. I want to put a hole into this lining leather as well. That's going to fold in half like that. And these are going to stick through both pieces of leather. Now you can also use tooling leather for this or thicker leather if you want it to be more solid. And I'm going to take these terrets and wiggle these through. 
It'll give it a little more support. To glue this, we want both of these turrets facing that way so the reins can go through. We need the water tree facing the back so that it can hook on. And this little D trimmed so that it'll fit underneath the, the top piece in front of the water hook. We also want these two pieces to fit just underneath and in the center on both sides, underneath, between the top and the lining. So one on each side, and we're gonna glue that. So this little hook should be sticking out the back, these two down, and when we glue it, this piece on the top, we want it to be bent like that, so it sits on the horse's back. First, I'm gonna trim this about that long so it doesn't get in the way. That'll fit under there. Now that I've got that, I'm gonna move that and get some glue underneath. And work it on the full underneath section of the top piece. Also gluing the first little bit of this down as well. Make sure it's centered on both sides. Here's the piece we have so far. Yeah, I got some glue on that because it's hard to video and do this at the same time, but be careful with your glue. Now take some craft felt. This is 100% uh, wool, but that's not necessary and cut out two of these felt pieces. With your two felt pieces, at the center, leaving about a millimeter between the two, empty, and then glue those two on to the saddle. That'll cover this, but it doesn't cover the center. Here's a view of the felt from the side. You can see there's a millimeter or centimeter between the two pieces. For your girth pattern, you want it to go length approximately the point of the elbow around the same on both sides. And then cut that out of black leather. Cut two one and a half inch pieces of the thicker 3 16th inch leather and put points on the end and then glue them onto the saddle on each side. So a piece of paper there so you can see. With about a quarter of an inch overlapping and this hanging down. It's another 332nd inch D-ring and some 332nd inch leather that's three quarters of an inch long. Thread that through the D-ring and fold it in half. Then, Take your girth piece and glue that on with a D-ring in the middle, like that. Now for the girth, we're gonna take a larger buckle that fits this 3 16 inch leather. You can also use a fancy girth buckles. We're gonna thread that onto a piece of 3 16 inch leather and glue that. Now I've thinned the end so there's plenty of room for the girth. And with the girth piece and this extra piece of leather, I want the buckle to hang over just a little, go as far as the other end, and then leave a little bit more and cut that off. 
And then I'm going to thread on the other buckle onto the other end. I'm going to glue this buckle down so that when I glue it on top of the girth, it's going to hang over equally on both sides when the girth is bent. And then glue this piece on top of the girth on the center. Make sure you bend it and curve it for it to dry horse shaped. With the D-ring on the saddle facing the back and the D-ring on the girth facing the front, thread that to the underside and buckle it on. Now we've buckled up the girth. You can see the D-ring points to the front. The girth buckles are the same on both sides. The saddle should not sit too far forward. One of the big problems with saddles on is people actually have it way too far forward. There should be some room down here for the horse's leg motion, about there. So now we're gonna do the section that holds the shafts. With the 3 16th leather, the thicker, cut two three inch pieces and with matching buckles, thread them on, centering the buckle. Starting just past the buckle on one side, apply glue to the back of this leather. And glue that right side up into the middle of that loop piece, leaving a little bit at the end undone. And do that with both sides. Then folding this in half, apply a little glue just on the other side of the buckle for about a half a centimeter and glue that on top, finishing the circle. So the buckle should be free and this end should be free, but the loop should be closed like that. I'm just sliding the buckle as close to this end as possible, the end that I just glued. And then I'm gonna put a little tip on the end of that. Oops, there we go, like that. Take this piece and thread it onto this piece sticking down. The shafts should now slide in and stay in that loop. Now tighten this so that the shafts are sitting in the correct location. Once I've got those on, you see how they stick out and that's where the shafts will go through. So now here's the part where I'm gonna start gluing parts down. If you take a look at your model, there's a show side and a not show side. Now this is the side that's gonna appear first when you're showing them. So this side I'm gonna make neater than the other side. The other side is where we're gonna do up buckles. So I'm gonna take another piece of the thick 3 16th leather and on this piece of leather underneath, not the piece that's buckled on, I'm gonna leave this adjustable to adjust shafts. I'm going to glue a piece of leather underneath there. To avoid confusion, this piece can still be adjusted for the height of the shafts this piece underneath is glued under. It looks like there's a buckle, but there isn't. There's no need to put a buckle there because it's covered by everything else. So I've put the saddle under the horse and buckled it up and put in my shafts and checking the height where I want them. Now this is the piece we just glued on. What we're gonna do is bring this underneath the horse and to the other side where it meets with this other piece. We're gonna pull it tight enough so that the shafts are sitting in the correct place. Then we're gonna cut this one at an extra inch just so we make sure we're correct and cut that off. With this piece we just cut, I sanded the end here to thin it 
and then taking another 3 16 inch buckle, I'm going to put that on and thread it through. At this point, do not glue it down. We have to test the size before we glue it down. Now here is where we're going to start fitting this to this horse, this specific mold. I want to make it easy to put on and I'm, for that I'm going to take away some of the refined look that you would get in some of the more expensive harnesses. So the first thing I'm going to do is fit this crouper. I'm going to give it a bit of a tug and make sure it fits properly. And then I'm going to line this up, center it on both sides, making sure everything's in the right place. And I'm going to apply a little glue and glue that on. It's not necessary. It can be left adjustable. But for me, this makes it so much easier during the showing. I'm going to cut and prepare and thin a piece of the thinner 330 seconds leather so that when I fold it in half, it goes from the basically the tip of the crouper to this D ring. Make sure that's thin. And take a piece of this piece of leather, wrong side up, so right sides together, we're gonna glue it down the center of this piece, just there, from there to there, covering the loin strap. Take this piece of leather and thread it through the D-ring from the bottom going upwards. This is where most harnesses still have the adjustability, but I'm leaving it off here. But what I've done is taken a little buckle and threaded that on top. So now it's right side facing up since it's come through the loop. And I wanna work this uh, buckle so it's gonna sit when it's properly adjusted just on top of the thicker section. Now we have all the pieces together. We're gonna to make this fit and finish it off so that it's easy on, easy off. First thing I want you to do is with this off the horse, work these buckles so that they're falling properly and everything's nice and flat. And with it on the horse, what we want to do is make sure this all falls into the correct location. So working these buckles makes that fall nicer. Make sure this is sitting when it falls nice and neatly coming down pretty straight that this is up against the horse's butt, that this is not pulling forward or backwards, but sitting vertically, and that this is not rubbing the windpipes. Work these buckles and adjust, adjust, adjust. Once I've adjusted all these, I am going to cut these short with little tips on the end of all of these pieces. Now, in reality, there would be keepers along here, and sometimes there's little raised bumps. It's mainly for decoration. However, I want this to be clean and easy. So I'm gonna fold that, and I'm gonna glue that all the way from here to here, glue it down completely. Now, when you do that, the crouper needs to be tight, and the saddle needs to be running vertically. So there should be no pull back on the saddle, but this should be far enough forward. So this is keeping in place. And then carefully glue that all the way along with the buckle sitting just on top of the thick stuff and cut it to about there. Finding this the easiest way to make sure I have it in the right place. Thread the shafts underneath these loops on both sides and then bring that girth with that buckle we hadn't done up yet and do that up onto this underneath piece leaving lots of room, lots of movement underneath. Now with the horse back in the cart, adjust the buckle on this piece underneath until it's a good tightness for your cart and your shafts. Tighten that buckle and glue the buckle down. Also, while the horse is still in the cart, 
make sure everything's in the correct location and mark the point where the shaft, uh, where the uh, harness traces are meeting the single tree and mark that. When you're marking this, take into account what your horse is doing. At this point, my horse is moving forward, thus he's pulling, thus this should be firm. There should be no give in it. If there's give in it, then the horse isn't pulling even though he's moving forward. So it should appear that the horse is moving. One more thing before removing the cart is this piece right here. When you've got it properly adjusted, mark the center point where it's meeting underneath. Now that it's off the cart, I'm gonna glue this buckle down. And the point where this was marked at center, I'm gonna glue just a point there to hold that in the center where the D-ring is. About a half, a half a centimeter of glue right there to hold that piece on centered. For the false martingale, I've thinned some 332nd inch leather. I have a hook and a jump ring. And I'm going to thread the hook onto the jump ring and close it. And then I'm gonna glue on the leather, a little piece of leather and glue that down. Now I want the hook open side to be facing the good side of the leather. When I'm gluing in a jump ring like that, I like to glue this part that's open right into the leather so that the open part does not allow the hook to shift out. So I'm basically gluing that right on top of it and hoping that doesn't shift too much. Next, hook this to the D-ring under the belly with the hook facing down. With the saddle in the right place and the girth correctly, not too far forward, bring this piece up Again, the right side should be facing out and bring it through the D-ring of the collar. And then I figure out where that's gonna sit so that it keeps the D-ring down, keeps the collar in the right place without pulling it. And then bend that. Check to make your saddles not too far forward. It is here, so I'm gonna loosen that a little. Pull the girth back. Once you have that okay, cut this leather and glue that down there. So the only adjustments we have now for the harness is the hook and these two buckles here. And uh, if you need to, the uh, crouper buckles. Everything else does not need to be adjusted. On the traces where you've marked the attachment to the single tree, take your knife and carefully cut slits just long enough so that this leather will fit over the single tree without putting any stress on the single tree. Another way to do it is to fold the leather in half and carefully take a little cut with some sharp scissors. We've been back in the cart of taking the traces. They should be underneath there, through the loop on the cart. and on. I'm going to do that on both sides. So that is now where you want it. Cut off the end here and just round the ends off a little right around here. Now this should be big enough so it comes on and off. The hole should be big enough so that it comes on and off without stressing out the leather. If you want, you can glue these down, the little flaps. You can even put some keepers over any of them so that it looks neater and neaten it up. Nothing should be sticking up. For the whole back straps, I'm gonna go over top of the traces so the traces are underneath and it's gonna go underneath and wrapped around two or three times and then buckle it up. Mm -hmm. 
Now you can do that every time you tack up, or if you're like me and never want to do that again because that took forever to do that buckle, what I'm going to do is making sure there's enough room here so that it can slide on and off, I am going to glue this, these pieces on top of each other so that it forms a single piece that slides, it's big enough to slide on and off the shaft. Here's the whole back strap once I've removed it from the uh, cart. So it's only really just tacked, but it just makes it easier to put on without having to do up the buckles all the time. I'm doing one side at a time. It's on a real harness. The correct way to do the wrap would be to go through the little loop right here, that's attached to part of the cart, then wrap twice, and bringing it back under and through under this, and then buckle it up. Here is our finished two pieces of harness. Everything is now just two simple pieces to put on. To tack up your model, if the tail is thin enough, you can slide the crouper on and then adjust it when it gets up. So I've set mine with some adjustment so that I can slide it on. When I slide it on, I can then tighten the crouper. Once I've tightened the crouper, we're going to do up the under girth, the main girth. Then you're going to do up this girth that goes around and holds these loops in place. On a fancier harness, I would have used smaller buckles, but this makes it just so much easier to tack up. So the next one, we just put on the collar, then do up the false martingale underneath. Thread the hames through, sorry, the traces through. And carefully bring the, harn the uh, shafts through these loops and through these loops on both sides, carefully. Bring your traces through the loops and attach them to the single tree. And make sure everything's shifted into place. If it needs to pull down, girth back far enough so that's fitted. This should be vertical, everything in place, nothing sticking out. Bring these forward as far as you can. Now all we need is the bridle and the doll. <laughs>